<laughs> How the devil? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh my Iora. Anyway, oh, look what I've got today. Oh, I'm well up for this one. Okay. So I've got this amp made in 1983. Okay. And it's the Pioneer SA740. And you're going, why the hell have you got that, Matt? Well, I'll tell you why. This amp brings back a lot of memories for me. This was my first uh, sort of dipping my toe into the proper hi-fi separate world. Before that, I had tape decks. I had an old Am crappy Amstrad amplifier. Uh, sorry, hi-fi stack system. It was shocking. Um, and I decided when I got my first job, I would splash out and buy an all-in-one hi-fi separate system. And I got, this was the amp that came with it. It had a tape deck, a tuner um, with FM and AM on it, and a record deck which had automatic belt-driven record deck. And, uh, but I think this was the, also it came with speakers. Oh, now, uh, this, I think this was the star of the show, because I think the turntable and the tape deck, they were okay, uh, it's, they sounded good, but I, I think they were the budget end. But I think the amp would have, would have done better had it had better components connected to it. But we'll find out today. Don't forget, this amp is 40 years old, made in 1983. Now, I ended up selling the flipping thing, the whole lot, for not much at all. Because I decided, oh, I didn't, want, didn't really listen to CDs and stuff like that. You know, MP3 was coming in and whatever. But here's a little clip of my daughter uh, singing a Christmas carol at Christmas. And in the background, you can see the hi-fi stack there, just to the right, or your left. <laughs> um, now, I used to make my daughters uh, sing um, for an extra Christmas present. <laughs> Probably would get social services run now. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure uh, she's 27 now, and I'm sure she'll appreciate me showing that clip. <laughs> anyway, so let's have a little look what we've got on the front and back of this amp. <laughs> okay, so on the front, we've got a power button on off. You've got A and B speakers. You press in for on, out for off, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. Headphone socket, ta-da. We'll be seeing how that sounds later. Now you've got your tone controls, your bass, your treble, your balance. Now the good thing, of what I like about these tone controls, not the balance, the balance clicks in the middle, but then there's a smooth motion before and after. But with the bass and treble, they click at every notch. There's a notch click, 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 click. So it's got a really nice feel to it. And no plastic buttons here or knobs, all aluminium, or for my American friends, aluminum. We've got a, a loudness on off. <whistles> then we've got a tape adapter too, which you can put that in, on or off, okay. Now I think what a tape adapter too is, I mean, I never used this when I had it. I, I was young, I didn't even know what it was for. But I'm assuming what it's for is you can, connect another tape deck and record a tape to another tape. That's what I think it's for, so you could do tape to tape. Because back in 1983, you didn't really see many, or they were just coming out, didn't really see many double tape decks. They sort of came out a little bit later on. They were all single tape decks up until then. There may have been a few, but it wasn't many. Then you've got your inputs, you've got your tuner, you've got your tape deck one, uh, your phono, it's got a phono stage built into it, and it got CD auxiliary. Now again, this is, this is, you know, this CDs have just come out. I think in 1982 they were released. This came out in 1983, so they were just in their infancy CDs. But they decided, Pioneer, to put a CD or auxiliary. It's not a CD on its own, you can use it as an auxiliary as well, because they were, they were kind of, they may use a CD player, but they may not, they've only just come out. Mm. And then you've got your volume knob here, and again, made of aluminium, aluminum. Okay, nice, good, solid um, volume button, volume pot. 
Let's have a look on the back. Okay, on the back, you've got your phono stage with your ground. Beautiful. Tuner input, CD auxiliary. Um, record and play for your tape one. Now, again, you don't see this much on, on modern amps now because obviously no one uses a tape deck anymore. So having a record out was it's really handy if you have a tape deck. Uh, and then you've got your, your tape adapter two, again, which you could do. I think possibly you could put that out and into that to record somehow, I don't know. Uh, what's this? Phones? What the? I, I have no idea what this is. Anybody in the comment section know what that is? Now, you've got these, these clip binding posts. I'm not a massive fan of these. Um, but it was in the 80s, they were, a lot of amps had them. Uh, I have ordered some um, leads which go into these with a little banana plug on the end. So you can plug the banana plug in there and leave, in, leave the wire in there, uh, like an adapter. Now they're really hard to find a, a decent one. There's not many about, I thought there would have been more because uh, it must be a call for it because I'm changing amps uh, up and down in and out all the time. So I don't really want to be take stripping down my banana plugs to, to bare wire and putting them in there to try this amp or change it over. Or if I just want to, you know, listen to this amp for now and again, I just don't want to be I want to mess around taking the banana plugs off the bare wire and sticking them in there. Bugger that. So hopefully these, can, these adapters will work well. You've got a fixed power lead here, okay? Obviously 240 volt for the UK. And then you've got your AC outlets then, which now I don't think, you probably can get these plugs. They're different in other countries. They've all got the different ones. This is for the UK. Uh, but this is, you've got switched here and unswitched. 100 watts max and the 80 watt max and I, and this is I think if I remember rightly you just plug your other components in here so your, your, your record deck goes in here your tape deck your tuner goes in there whatever and then I think with the switch one obviously they come on automatically with the end switch they don't okay I've got it all connected up Ooh. <laughs> right um, and how does it sound? Well, what I've done for you guys, as a type of guy I am. <laughs> anyway, right? Uh, I've done a blind A-B test uh, between the Pioneer and this Moran 70S. And obviously the 70S is on direct mode going through two channel stereo, no sub. Just to make it a fair comparison, I'm not gonna do surround sound with it, it's not fair because this 70S is very good uh, playing stereo music, it's really good. So how does this 40 year old amp compare to it? Um, well, we're going to see. So like I said, blind A and B test. So the first half of the song is blind A and B and halfway through it reveals which amp is which. Have a listen. <laughs>
So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section. I do like to hear what you have to say. Um, make it nice though. Nah, don't make it nice. <laughs> make it as horrible as you want. <laughs> anyway, um, well, the first thing I noticed was that I tried to record it at about 85 dB, around about there, for both amps. This was only on number three, okay? And this was on 82% of the volume. I was like, what? Now, through two channel stereo, the specs on this say it gives out 50 watts per channel RMS. Now this is only 40 watts per channel, but boy is it loud. Flipping heck, it's loud compared to this one. I, 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 I don't have an answer, don't know why. Maybe it's because it's got less components in it or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it was way louder. Uh, when it comes to bass, I think the bass on the Marantz was slightly more controlled, but this had more bass. Um, if I had to record it again to get a fairer comparison, I would have turned the bass down a little bit. That's the treble. <laughs> the bass. I would have turned the bass just down a little bit because it's got a lot of bass that comes out of it. Very surprised. When it comes to the mid-range, I think they were pretty even. Both pretty good. The top end, I'd have to give to the Marantz. It was a bit clearer on the top end. But again, if I was to record it again to make it a fair comparison, I'd just use the tone controls to turn the treble up a little bit. But weirdly enough, um, I felt that the Pioneer amp was a bit more organic, a bit more analog-y, if that's a word. Just uh, say analog and add E on the end. <laughs> analog E. <laughs> right? It was, it was a bit earthy, a bit more organic. Um, and funny enough, I felt that the Pioneer was warmer than the Marantz. Now, Marantz is renowned for, being, for, being, uh, for having warm amps. That's warm, not that type of warm. Okay, warm sounding, all right? <laughs> uh, but I did like the sound of this amp. Now it could be rose tinted glasses, remembering the sound of this amp, but it didn't have Dali Oberon 5 speakers connected to it. So, you know, so it was, it's a completely different sound now to what it was with the, the old Pioneer speakers it had. But all in all, I think it handled itself well compared to the Marantz. Like I said, the Marantz was slightly brighter, um, maybe a bit more of an open sound stage. But to compare the sounds, it's not one is better than the other. It's kind of like these just sound different to each other. And don't forget, most of the capacitors on this and whatever, the components, are 40 years old. So this put up a very good performance considering its age. I think it's been well looked after. Uh, when it comes to the phono stage, I was really surprised how good the phono stage is. And again, that bass was pres presence was there. Um, I would say it's as good a phono stage as any 200 quid um, external phono stage you could buy today, easily. And I think the reason for that is, is that back in 1983, records were a big deal. So they had to put decent phones, phono stages in these amps. Now I think modern amps, not all of them, maybe not, you know, but most of the modern amps, it's kind of an afterthought, or oh, we better put it in because people are getting back into vinyl again. So we better put it in. It's kind of an afterthought. And that's why a lot of people have to buy external phono amps. I won't need to buy an external phono amp for this. Absolutely preposterous. Anything under 5,000 British pounds is not considered aerophile. <laughs> you, sir, are an arse. And what I, what I intend to do with this is play all my analog stuff through it. So I'm gonna play my record player through it and my tape deck through it and have it connected to that um, because I just like the sound it gives out. Now, like I said, I'm very surprised how well this, how well this is performing due to its age. It's probably lost a little bit of its oomph, right? But, you know, I'm like, a little bit blown away by, wow, like the bass on it is insane. And uh, so what I want to do is have a little look inside because this must have had a service. There's no crackling on the volume. There's no crackling on your, on your tone controls or anything like that. Everything works perfectly. So I wonder if it's been repaired or serviced at some point. 
So let's have a little look inside <laughs> and see if we can find any replacement parts in there. Ooh. So here it is. Woohoo! <laughs> now, the only thing I can see different in here from when it was new uh, is a dead spider right there. <laughs> it's quite dirty in here. So I am going to give it a bit of a clean and a dust up. Uh, clean some of these cobwebs off and things like that. Although, someone must have been in here at some point because some of the fins... Now, this is a weird looking heat sink compared to the ones we have today. But some of the fins here have been broken off and they're not in there. So if they'd broken off when they were in there, they'd be rattling around. So someone has had this off at some point, I reckon, to repair it or do something to it. But I can't see anything in there that's been replaced. Everything looks like it was when it was new, like I said, apart from the spiders. <laughs> but I can't see it. nothing in there at all, no. So there, like I said, you've got the heat sink here, some ribbon cables. There's your, po here's your power in here. Not a particularly huge transformer, but it gives up some power. I give it, give it that, fair play. Don't know how they've done that. Some large caps there. Here's your phono input stage here somewhere. Around there, some ribbon cables. Not a lot to see. Anyway, let's give it a bit of a clean. And there you go, clean outside and inside. Pfft, don't want a lot of dust and cobwebs in it. It could mess with the electronics. It probably won't, but it's best to err on the side of caution. Whoa. Okay. So all in all, um, I think it's a very decent amp considering its age. Uh, does it sound as good as when it was brand new? Probably not, but it still puts out a very good sound and it's pretty loud, <laughs> okay? So I'm very happy with it. I am going to keep it for now and play all my analog stuff through it. Uh, I do like its earthy and uh, analogy sound. Analogy, e, all right? It's a new word I just invented. Uh, so I am going to keep it. And I only paid 44 quid. How much? 44 quid. <laughs> and there you go. Anyway, that's the end of the video. If you got this far, Give it a like, helps the video pop along. Okay, the uh, algorithms go, mm, okay, people liking it. We'll get, give it more views, helping the channel out. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, sort it out, subscribe, okay? I'll catch you in the next one.